Hello students, we are going to start from today, the syllabus, we are starting with the first chapter called Living Word. In the last classes, we have discussed about the bridge courses, I have given you introduction regarding the bridge courses. Now, we will directly start the first chapter called the Living Word. So, in this, again we are starting with the first word called as biology. Biology is a Greek word. Bio means life or living. Logy means to study. So, biology is called as life science. It is the study of life or it is the study of living organisms. Hence, biology is also called as life science. Biology is also called as life science. It deals with the study of life. Next, biology is related to the nature, the environment. All the living organisms depend upon the environment or the surrounding. Hence, biology is also called as natural science. Biology is also called as Natural science. Now, biology father, the father of biology. Father of biology is called Aristotle. We call Aristotle as a father of biology because this person has studied both the plants and Animals. He studied about one or few plants, but more about the animals he has started studying. Hence, Aristotle is called as the father of biology. Now, we step into the next verse. Biology is coined by the name term biology is coined by named by lemma and primariness. These two persons. Lemoir and the prime illness has coined the word biology. So already in the lower classes we have studied about Lemoir called Jean Baptiste D. Lemoir. This person used a theory called as use and disuse theory. Use of an organ well develops well. When an organ is not used, it becomes a waste organ that was given by Lemoir and he is famous for that theory and he coined the word Biology. Next, we'll go for biology has two main branches. One of the main branch is called as botany. So here, the spelling of the botany is very important because many of the students, when they ask you to write the botany spell, they write botany. So this is not the spelling. B O T O should not be written. It is B O T A N Y. So the spelling of the word is very important. So this is nothing but a branch of science. Word is nothing but a branch of science deals with the study of all varieties of plants. Or it is nothing but deals with the study of plants. So this branch is called as botany. Now. The father of botany. Father of botany is Theophrastus. Father of botany is called as Theophrastus and he is the student of Aristotle. So this person, Aristotle studied only a few plants, but here he is student by the Theophrastus studied more about the plant, hence he is called as the father of botany. Now we go for the second branch called as zoology. So this spelling is easy, Z O O L O G Y. This is the one called as zoology is a branch of science which deals with the study of all varieties of animals. All varieties of animals. So this is about zoology. 
The father of zoology is the father of zoology is Aristotle. Again, Aristotle is called as father of biology as well as he is also called as the father of zoology because he is studying more about the animals. So these are the two main branches coming under the biology. Now we are studying into the next word called as the characters of living organisms. So now we are starting with the next word called properties of life or characters of living organisms. So here we know that all the living organisms exhibit various characters like cell or internal growth, movement or consciousness, adaptation or reproductions or all those characters how they exist based on this we are going to discuss one after the other. We are talking about their first character. All the living organisms are made up of cells or cell. In a unicellular organisms we use the word cell. In a multicellular organisms we use the word cells. But here all the living organisms must and should be made up of cell. So without the cell there is no life at all. So cell is defined as it is the structural and functional unit of life. Cell is defined as the structural functional unit of life. So here again the cells may be classified as two types. One is called as a prokaryotic cell. The meaning of prokaryotic cell, it is a primitive cell, poorly developed cell or nucleus is not very developed. Only genetic bacteria is present in the prokaryotic cell. So this prokaryotic cells can be noticed in a unicellular organisms like one of this is called as bacteria. So in unicellular organisms, we see prokaryotic cells are there. This is called as bacteria. Now, we will start with the next word called as eukaryotic cell. So the word eukaryotic, it is very developed through nucleus or well organized cell with all the cytoplasmic organelles and also has well developed nucleus with four components. One is called as the word eukaryotic cell. It is present in all the multicellular organisms. Multicellular organisms, eukaryotic cells are present. This can be noticed in a higher plants, animals and humans also. Animals and humans, there is a presence of very cell called as eukaryotic cell. Now again, as I said earlier, cell may be classified as Unicellular, multicellular, acellular. The word acellular, the cell is totally absent. We can notice only in the virus. Virus do not have a life. It is a living particle. They, they do not have cell. Except that all the other living organisms will have cell or it may be unicellular or multicellular. Now we will start with the, the next character called as Growth. The next character is growth. All the living organisms will grow. So it is an important character of living organism. Growth is a must. Growth is nothing but it is the increase in the size. Increase in the increase in size and volume of an organism. It may be size. Or a volume or increase in the body of an organism is called as is called as growth. Or we can say the other word called as growth is also called as it is the irreversible increase in size. Irreversible increase in size of an organism is also called as growth. Because we know that once we are keep on growing, 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 we cannot come back. 
So you rightly use the word increase in size of an organism is called as growth. Now we are going in detail about the growth. So we know that there are different types of organisms. One is called as again unicellular organisms. So when we take a unicellular organism, they divide by the binary fission. Binary segregation or we use the word binary fission. By the process of binary fission, there is increase in number of an organisms. So like this, unicellular organisms divide and grow in the presence of many number of copies that is called as growth. When you go for a multicellular organisms, so in a multicellular organisms, the growth is always called as cell division. In the presence of cell division, in the presence of cell division, the cells keep on dividing, dividing, dividing and helps in increasing the size of an organism. So, in here, the cell divisions may be mitosis or meiosis. Major, major is mitotic type of cell division leads to the growth of an organism. So, here, the cell division will keep on growing, growing, growing. Now, we go for some more examples regarding the growth. So, we know that all the living organisms will grow. Either it may be lower organisms, higher organisms, or one or the other, the growth is present. So, we are now, we are talking about growth. For example, growth in the living organisms. So, we know that the growth is present both internal and external. Inside our body, we have various organs. Along with that, the external structures, internal structures, they grow simultaneously. So, we, all living organisms, including we, we have internal and external growth. Internal and external growth takes place simultaneously. Such type of a growth, both internal and external type of a growth is always called as intersusception. It is called intersusception. The word intersusception, it is nothing but internal and external growth. Notice in all the living organisms for that we use the word intersusception. Now, when we go for non-living, I will be comparing with non-living as well as living. What may be the differences? I will keep on giving you here. Non-living. So we know that non-living never grow because they don't have life, they never grow. But some of the non-living looks like a growth. Non-living looks like a growth. So this growth is due to external deposition. External deposition of particles one or the other, maybe the dust particles one or the other, external depositions, it looks like a growth in the non-living, they are called as accretion. Non-living looks like a growth, non-living has growth or looks like a growth that is called as accretion. So whereas living internal and external growth called as intersubsection, here only external Depositions looks like a growth called as accretion. Or I'll give you one more example. When you take a dry seeds, when a dry seeds are soaked in the water, they are swell, they swell. This phenomena is called as inhibition. Or I'll give you one more example. When you take at the time of rainy season, the dose of windows increase in size because of absorption of water. So here also that leads to or it looks like a growth of those and windows but that is not the exact growth because of absorption of water they look like a growth that phenomenon is called as inhibition but it's not a real growth. But in a real growth internal and external growth is present called as intersubsorption. 
Now we'll go for the next property of an enemy law that is a mass, a definite size and shape. We know that.
The word catabolism is nothing but breakdown. Tear down. Breakdown, tear down, destruction of an organ or organisms in this organism. They have destruction of enzymes, proteins, like this, lipids. Destruction is called as catabolism, synthesis is called as anabolism. Anabolism and catabolism together is called as metabolism. Like this, all the living organisms undergo metabolic activities. Now, in the cytoplasm of a cell, in the cytoplasm of a cell, it has the presence of both organic and inorganic chemicals are present. Organic and inorganic compounds are being present in the cell. In the presence of organic and inorganic, the cell undergoes function. In biology, we use the word organic components are called as result foods. Result food may be called as organic, carbohydrates, starch, proteins, all that comes under organic. The inorganic in the biology, we use a word carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, all this together is called as inorganic, organic. Together, they undergo functioning of a cell. That functioning of a cell is called as metabolism. Whereas in non living, no metabolism at all. So, in all the living organisms, it undergoes metabolism. So we go for the next character called as movements. So we know that all the living organisms will move. So the movement is a must in all the living organisms for the sake of search of food. For the sake of or for the search of food, they must and should move. Or for the sake of partner. Or for the sake of clothing in some of the higher organisms. Or for the sake of shelter. So here, the movement is required for the sake of one or the other. Major animals move for the sake of food, for the sake of partners, for the sake of shelter, clothing, for one or the other. Climatic changes also, the organisms will move from place to place. So we know that we come to the college for the sake of studies. We go for the shopping. So to purchase the items. Like this, one or the other, the movement is present in all the living organisms. Movement is a must. So the movement may be the movement may be needed or not needed. But still, but still, some of the organisms will move because of internal and external stimulus also. Internal and external stimulus also, the movement is present. So here when there is a very, very, very hot, we move to the shade or we move to the cool regions. Like this, the movement is present in all the living organisms. For the sake of food, we move from place to place. But, we will take plants as an example. We know that all the plants have a presence of well developed root system is there. Once the root system is present, that roots holds the plant, the root holds the plant or we write this in that it is being anchorage or it is called as anchored to the soil so the plants cannot move but still the plants also moves plants also moves from one direction to the other direction so as we know that the best example is sunflower the sunflower the flowers moves to the direction of the sun like this the plants will move for example, the roots always move towards the water. Like this, the movements of present in the plant. For example, the best one more example is Mimosa purica. Touch me now. Mimosa purica moves towards the plant. Like this, the plants also moves. For example, the plants growing towards the gravity. Or they take when a plant is grown, the roots move towards the soil, moving towards gravity is called as geotrophism. Moving towards gravity is called as geotrophism. Gravity. Now, the stem always moves to the light. Moving towards the light is called as phototrophism. Moving towards the light is called as phototrophism. Next, 
moving towards the chemicals called as chemotrophism moving towards the chemicals they are called as chemotrophism next moving towards the pets called as tigmotrophism tigmotrophism is nothing but moving towards the pets we know that best example is Actually, my mosa, pudipa, which is called as tigmotrophism. We have various moving towards water, called as hydrotrophism. So we have various types of movement in the plants. Moving towards water is called as hydrotrophism. So at this, the plant pass through because of the root system. Once it is fixed to the soil, they cannot move from place to place. But we will take a small examples called as a unicellular algae called as Chlamydomonas. Unicellular algae called as Chlamydomonas. This Chlamydomonas, Walwax, Eugrina, all these are algae which can move from place to place in the water. So in the water, the movement can be noticed here. So this is one more called as movement. So we go for the next chapter called as consciousness. So we know that all the living organisms will respond to the external stimulus. It respond to the environment. So we know that the sense organs present in an organism can react, can respond to the external changes or to the environmental changes. They can easily identify this like this. All the living organisms has their own consciousness. So we know that as the environment surrounding is keep on changing. So for example, when there is a raining, it is already will come to know whether it rains or not. So when it is raining, it can be easily identified, but still when it is a cloudy, we easily say that it may rain. Like this, organisms will have precautions or consciousness about it. I will give one more example. When a person is holding a stick and calling a dog to come, the dog never comes because he has the consciousness that the person may hit him. So we like this, all the animals have their own part as consciousness. So this is living organisms as consciousness and non-living do not have consciousness. Same way, we are going for one more character called as adaptation. Adaptation. So, all the living organisms has the ability to adjust to the surrounding. That is called as adaptation. Living organisms will adapt to the environment. Hence, it is called as adaptation. So, here, here, once it is very, very, very hot, an organism will adjust for the hotness by drinking water or when you go for the humans, they will go for AC or they use fat one or the other or they wear light dress to avoid hotness. Same way, the cold. When you take a cold, when an organism is present in the cold, they also try to adjust the environmental changes. Like this, all the living organisms will adjust for the environmental factors. So it is called as adaptation. So an ability to adjust to the environment of surrounding is called as adaptation. This is present in all the living organisms. Now, we we'll move on. One more character. So, we know that all the living organisms will reproduce. Reproduction. So, all the living organisms will reproduce for the continuity of life for the continuation of generation. So, reproduction is a must for the continuity. So, here, the living organisms will reproduce by two methods. One, called as asexual methods. And the other one is called as sexual methods. Now, when you take a unicellular organisms, majority of the unicellular organisms will undergo asexual methods. So, in this, it may be in the form of biodegradation, budding, 
fragmentation. Like this, there are many asexual type of reproductions of being present. Spore emission. Like this, they have different type of asexual reproductions present in a lower organisms. But still, but still, the living organisms reproduce. For example, for example, when we take amoeba, bacteria, all this undergoes binary fission. So amoeba is split into two, or the bacteria is split into two bits, that is called as binary fission. Such type of binary fission can be noticed in asexual type of reproduction. Now, when we go for sexual reproduction, here, Asexual reproduction means uniparental, a single parent help in reproduction. Whereas in a sexual reproduction, two different parents involves. So one is a male parent and the other one is a female parent, or two different parents involved in the reproduction is called as sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, there is the formation of gametic sequences. So in sexual reproduction, Formation of gametes called as gametogenesis takes place. The fusion of a male gamete and female gamete leads to the formation of a zygote. Or we use the word the fusion of male and female gamete. This process is called as fertilization. So the gametes are formed and leads to the fertilization. And as the fertilization takes place, they fuse together to form zygote. So like this, like this, the sexual reproduction involves two parents and gametogenesis takes place and reproduces. So reproduction is a must for the continuation of the process. We we'll go for the last chapter. We we'll go for the last chapter called as death. Now we know that. All the living organisms must and should die. As in a living organisms, there are three processes. One is called as three phases. One is called as a childhood. We use the word juvenile phase. The second one is called as maturity. So maturity phase is nothing but those who are able to reproduce. They are called as maturity, and they become old age. So old age is called as senescence. As the old age takes place, the slow down, slow down of metabolic activities, slow down of metabolic activities. So as it becomes slow down, the age is becoming lesser, 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 and it stops. So such type of processing becomes less and leads to the death of an organism. So this is one. When we go for the unicellular organisms are immortal. The unicellular, unicellular organisms are immortal. The meaning of immortal, there is no death in a living organism because here unicellular organisms no death is called as immortal because here the parental body like bacteria splits into two daughter cells. So here the parent is split into two daughter cells or two young ones. So no death in the unicellular organisms. Hence it is usually no death in unicellular, but all the other single plant, animal, anything, the death is a must. Hello students, we have completed the properties of life. Now I am giving you some assignment regarding the properties of life. So prepare this questions and write down this separately. Clear? Now I am giving you assignment questions. The first question is who is the father of biology? Who is the father of biology? The second question is name the father of botany. So we are going to write the botany father name. Next, what is group? So what is group? Next group, differentiate eccentric and intrinsic group. I repeat this, differentiate eccentric and eccentric group. Next, what is metabolism? Next group, define reproduction. The next question is, differentiate Sexual, asexual, and sexual type of reproduction. 
differentiate asexual and sexual type of reproduction. So in fact, the, the next study called as the diversity of living organisms. Here, the meaning of diversity of the living organisms. So on the earth, we know that various types of living organisms are present. We know that different varieties of organisms. It may be microorganisms, plants, animals, like this. We have a different various type of organisms. So the different type of organisms present on the earth is called as biodiversity. So various type of organisms present on the earth. To study that, to know about that, we call this as biodiversity. So we know that various type of organisms are there, but still. But say about 1.7 million to 1.8 million species have been identified till now. So we know that there are various type of organisms, but still 1.7 million to 1.8 million organisms have been identified. But still, we know that they are estimated around about 100 million species of there. 100 million species of there. Majority have not yet been discovered. We have a chance of searching out research worksheet done for identification of various type of organisms. But here, 1.7 to 1.8 million species have been identified under biodiversity. Now, we are going to set up a word called as taxonomy. The word taxonomy is nothing but a branch of science. It deals with the study of naming and classification of an organism. So taxonomy is a branch of science deals with the study of naming, naming and classification of an organism. Classification of organism is called as so here, the Cornus linearius, Cornus linearius, this person is called as the father of taxonomy. This person is called father of taxonomy. So this person studied about how to name, how to classify an organism. He is called as taxonomy, hence this person is called Cornus linearius, is called the father of taxonomy. Now, taxonomy is nothing but we are going to identify new variety of plants or animals. How to identify, how to name? I am going to do this. Here, taxonomy, I am giving you an elaborated definition. Taxonomy is a branch of science, deals with Identification deals with identification, description, description, nomenclature, nomenclature, and classification of an organism. Classification of an organism. So here in taxonomy, if there is a strange plant, strange animal, we are going to identify this. This is called as identification. After identification, we are going to know what is that. So that knowing about an organism is called as a description. After describing, we go and classify. First, we are going to name it. Naming an organism. Naming an organism is called as a nomenclature and a classification is done based on the characters. For example, when we have seen a blue colored tree, so blue colored tree is not existing. If you see such type of a tree, we are going to identify it and we know whether someone has been painted or really it is a blue that comes under a description. If it is really a blue colored one, we are going to name called as nomenclature. After naming it, we are going to classify that based on the characters. Either it is character 
that's our matching the end response, June response, or lower organism. Based on that, we are going to classify this. So, always a taxonomy should be studied in a particular manner. For example, first we should identify, describe, nomenclature, and classify. Hence, hence taxonomy is also called as systematics. It is also called as systematics. Now, when we are dealing with a plant, when we are dealing with a plant, it is called as systematic botany. When we are dealing with an animal, it is called as systematic zoology. Systematic zoology. Overall, taxonomy is also called as systematics. So this is about taxonomy. It deals with the study of various organisms living and classification of an organism comes under taxonomy. So, the taxonomy is used because thousands of organisms are there. Based on that organisms, we know that we also have local languages. Many local languages are there that should not confuse one with the other one. So, we use taxonomy. For example, for example, when we know that a rose, based on the different languages, rose is being used. So, depending upon local languages like Kannada, Telugu, or any other different Hindi, each word we are going to use different words for the rose. Same way for the banana. We have various names. So these names should not be confused one with the other one. So we have a common names, common names all over to identify a particular organism. So we are going to name an organism called as nomenclature. So when we are going to name an organism like mango, Mangifera indica. So, when we are going to name an organism called as Mangifera indica. So, in a Mangifera indica, it is called as mango. So, in this mango, when we use the word Mangifera indica, this will be common all over. So, it never leads to confusion with one word with the other one. So, naming an organism is very, very important to a particular species. Now, for example, if you have been identified an organism, you are going to name it and that naming and classification should be done and it should be sent to ICBN. If you are identifying a plant, you are going to name and classify and it should be sent to ICBN. The word ICBN is called as International Code of Botanical Botanical Nomenclature. So ICBN means it is an international code. Don't write Indian Council. All that becomes wrong. You should not use the word botany names. It is called as International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Similarly, when we identify an animal. When you are identifying an animal, it is called as ICZN, called as International International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. Zoological Nomenclature. So, hence, this is zoology. So, an animal is identified, you should send for ICZN. When a plant is identified, you should send to ICBN because we know that various types of animals and plants are being present. When you send a plant to ICBN, if you are surprised with that plant, but the details of that plant is present in ICBN. If it is really a strange one, you can name it and classify it, and it is being awarded. And that document is awarded for new plants. But if it is strange for you, but the details of that plant, all varieties of plants are 
being recorded here, you will get the information about that plant. Same way, animal. When you identify an animal and send, you will get the details of the strange animal in ICZN.